Hey everybody, welcome back uh, to my shop tonight. Uh, tonight we're going to be doing a uh, kind of a show and tell thing. I asked uh, a couple of days ago if people wanted to uh, show off their recent projects and I got a bunch of emails with a whole bunch of pictures. So we'll be, uh, we'll be going through those tonight. Uh, we've already got a good crowd over there that was waiting to me to go live here evening everybody uh let me do a quick roll call over there we've got dale ludlum thomas Grimm, raymond dixon mark Lindsay, cnc leo steger uh jeremy kitchens snapshots whoever that is i can't remember. i can't remember i don't remember those silly names i just remember you if you put your real name on there alan vader jim ridgeway uh one of our first winners in the giveaway how you doing jim uh masso cnc controllers jet is in the house how you doing jet uh the wood bucket and by the way jet i was going to mention since you're here i'm going to go ahead and talk about that in case y'all don't know and jet you can put something in the the chat as well so everybody knows uh, he is doing a podcast i got an email uh the other day and jack correct me if i'm wrong I, I believe it was thursday well for me it was thursday at 7 p.m i think for you guys it was uh 9 9 a.m i think on a friday but it was only 7 p.m on a thursday here i believe that's right so uh yeah, if you guys, you know, all you guys that are interested in a Masso or, or the ones that already have one, that's a, a great podcast. Um, let me see if I can put, see what it says on here. Because I wanted to shout out the other guys too, that uh, Ben and Aaron uh, was on that podcast with him. So uh, I was actually out here in my shop working, but I kind of had it, had the earphones plugged on and was listening to them. Um uh, so yeah, you guys go check that check that out. Uh, that's the Masso Controller uh, podcast. Now is that going to be a weekly thing, Jat? Where it'll always be every uh, Thursday at seven p.m. Eastern time. I'll give him a minute to respond there. Patriot Air, he says, hello all, wiring my gat now, exciting time. Every day is an exciting day. Rob Schuster, how you doing, Rob? I got your uh, email uh, just a little while ago and got it added to the, to the list here, so we'll be showing your stuff. Uh, at this stage, every two weeks. Okay, so every, every other week, and... I saw it. I think you, well, I got an email cause I'm subscribed and stuff, but, um, I think you had a, a link on Facebook and everything. So, uh, if you're not following Masso, um, uh, on Facebook, you need to go ahead and do that. Um, Frankie CNC said, how's the dog Dave? Yeah. Rocky had a rough week. <laughs> he, uh, I tell you the old boy, he's hanging in there. He, I don't know what he did. He, he, you know, I take him for rides all the time and I have a, a an F two fifty super duty pickup truck that sets kind of high and he normally doesn't have any trouble jumping in it. I just open the door and he hops right in, but apparently he was, uh, I think he was trying to get in before Jack, which Jack that he, that guy could jump over the truck. He's, but, uh, but Rocky kind of miscalculated a jump and kind of just, I don't know. He hung, he hung his leg up somehow or something, I guess. I, I, I didn't really see what happened. But, you know, just like all us old men, you know, you do something like that and you kind of sore a couple of days later because he was fine right after that. But um, a couple of days later, uh, let's see, Wednesday, I guess it was, he couldn't even hardly get up. And I, I was really worried about him. I thought, oh, Lord, what's going on? Am I going to have to put him down and all this stuff? But uh, got him in to see the vet the next day, and they said he 
hyper extended his right rear leg somehow. So I don't know. I guess might have got hung on the something in the truck when he because he when he jumped up and didn't make it, he just kind of fell all the way back on his back on the driveway. So but anyway, he's doing good. He's got <laughs> he's got some drugs. I'm giving him some. Uh, they said it was m just like Motrin only for dogs. So uh, he's taking that and starting to run around a little bit now. He's he's doing much better. So thank you all for your concern about that. Um, let's see. We got Eugene Nolan, Steve Misher, Dave Mack. Welcome, Dave Lyle, uh, Brent Poland, Larry Duggar. Uh, yeah, labs are known to have arthritic problems. Yeah, I've, I've been given Rocky. You know, he's going to be 12 in September. So he's, he's, uh, you know, he's pretty old for the kind of dog he is anyway. And I've been giving him the, uh, I think it's called glucosamine or something. It's like some kind of stuff for your joints. I've been giving him that for the past three or four years. Um, but yeah, he just, he just jumped and miscalculated and fell, fell back. And, uh, yeah, like I said, <laughs> when you get old and you do stuff like that, you feel it a couple of days later, but. But all, all is well. He's going to be as good as new here in an, another day or two. Um, okay, so we talked about uh, the Masso thing. Like I said, uh, make sure you check out that podcast. Uh, if it's going to be every other week, it'll be week after this coming Thursday, I guess. Um, so make sure you check that out. Also, uh, I have got a bunch of folks that have, emailed me or sent me a comment on Facebook or something bragging on that book that I talked about a couple of weeks ago or whenever it was. Uh, yeah, this is an awesome book. If you are new to CNC, especially if you're brand new, but even if you're, um, you know, still trying to get your feet wet a little bit, this is really a must have. It really is. And again, I put a link down at the, in the show description here if you want to hit it up on Amazon. In fact, when I put that link on there today, the price has come down. I think it was like $18 and something now. I think it was, I want to say 22 something when I first put it on there. So it's, the, it's coming down in price. Great. Just a fantastic book. Uh, it'll be money well spent. So check that out. Uh, I saw somebody say, yeah, you're going to have to build him a ramp. Yeah, that, I'm going to end up building some kind of little something that I can, when I back, because he doesn't ever get out of the truck when I go anywhere. He always just sits in the truck when I'm, you know, go to Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever I'm going, UPS store or whatever. But uh, when I back in the driveway, I need to have, have him a, a step there or something where he doesn't have to do that all in one jump. It's just getting to be a little tough for him. Uh, let's see. Alan Gilbert says, bought mine last week. It is an informative book. Yeah, it's it's about the best one I've seen, especially for somebody that's, that's brand new. Steve Misher says, got my book last week for $14 on Amazon. Now, that's, that's the best price I've seen. I think it was $18 uh, when I looked up the link today. Uh, okay, yeah, we got a good crowd here. We got about 60 some folks watching. Uh, has anybody got any questions about anything before we jump into the uh project pictures? Read the book to us. <laughs> I don't have that long. Plus, I'm I feel like I'm sitting in the dark, you know. I've had everybody was talking about the lighting, and I had that one light right above me that I have to disconnect because the light from it was washing out the the webcam. So I've got my, uh, you know, all these lights really behind me are off. And I brought my, my two uh, studio lights out here. So hopefully the, the lighting is a little better for y'all. And by the way, guys, there's still, well, if I can get out of the way here, there's still lots of prime real estate left on my uh, sticker board back there. I haven't got any stickers uh, in the last couple of weeks. So if anybody wants me to 
put their sticker on here and it'll be seen every week when uh when i'm out there doing these shows so bullfrog alert we must have jeff connor in the house yep jeff connor's in the house how you doing jeff jason owensby welcome uh just uh let me just kind of do an informal poll all you guys over there in the uh chat if this is your first time uh watching this show live put put some kind of comment in there just say first time or or whatever i'm just curious to how many um how many are watching it for the first time Jim sent a coal in the house, uh, Trevor Carter. We're going to be showing some projects from both of you guys here in just a little bit. Jesse Snyder. I got, uh, some photos of his, um, we're going to be looking at, uh, let's see what else over there. First time live, Brett Poland. Well, welcome Brett. I hope you'll, uh, I hope you'll come back and watch. Trevor says, first time you were on my big screen. I tell you what, that's how I watch all my, you know, anytime I'm watching somebody else's show or even a Facebook live or whatever it is, I like to do it from in there, uh, sitting in my recliner and have it cast to the my big screen TV. It's nothing like watching it on one of those. Richard Smedley, third time here. How you doing, Richard? Uh, David Budd. Okay, Steve is say, saying that book's still on Amazon for fourteen forty four. Okay, the, the, like I said, I did a link just a few hours ago, and it was 18, 18 something, I think. Uh, Ron Cleveland in the house. Ron sent me some pictures. Ron Gudo, I think, third time. Uh, okay, now I got another question to ask you all. Uh, how many of you are only started watching because of the giveaways? <laughs> I probably already know the answer to that question, but, but yeah, yeah, we've done, uh, what have we done? Two giveaways so far. Jim Ridgeway was the first winner and, uh, I don't know. I've already forgot the second winner's name. Anybody remember? Hmm. Keith Allen. Natsky or something like that. Uh, won the one last week, I think. Jerry Bonfield in the house. How you doing, Jerry? All right. Well, I guess nobody else has any questions about anything. The wood bucket. Keith, yeah. Not me. Bought my getting. Yeah. Give away one of them shirts. Well, the only problem with giving away shirts is I've, I've found that a lot, of, and don't don't take offense, guys, but I have found that a lot of woodworkers slash CNC folks are kind of on the large size. And so when I buy a bunch of shirts and I, you know, the first ones to go are always the, the 2X and, and the 1X and all that. I've got a few of these shirts left. But uh, I don't know, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of the good sizes as far as doing a giveaway. Now, I do have them available on my spreadsheet, uh, spreadshirt site, which you can get to from, um, you know, if you go to the davegatton.com website, Mr. Lutz in the house. How are you? Um, my old buddy, it's always building them wrong handed guitars out there. Um, yeah, if you go to uh, the davegat.com, there's a, a link up the top, I think, that where you can go get merchandise. You can get the hats, you can get the shirts, you can get you know, you can get a shop apron, you can get all kinds of stuff. So, uh, that's, that's the best way to get it right now because I'm kind of phasing out my stuff. I had, I had been using a local company and getting them and then taking them to like meetups and stuff. But like I said, you buy enough of all the different sizes and then you just give the big ones away because that's what everybody needs. And then I'm kind of stuck with the, the small ones. So, 
or I, I won't say small, but like medium and large and stuff like that. So, okay. Anybody got any other questions? Uh, watching your videos for about three months. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate that. Well, if we don't have any, any, uh, questions there uh i'm gonna go ahead and and we'll start in with the uh let's see yeah we're we'll gonna go ahead and start in i've got me a trusty little mouse up here where i can drive from up here so if we don't have any questions i am going to go ahead and start with this uh screen share business and we'll get into showing off some of these projects here. Uh, let's see here. And I printed out some emails. These are the folks, the ones you see here that have sent me. Let's see if I got everybody on it. Yeah, I guess I do. Uh, but I've got some emails. If I can find where I put them. And I'm going to try to read along the description. Uh, we're going to start with uh, Dell Ludlum. Uh, with he's with Anything Wood Inc. And we'll start with his photos that he sent. Can everybody see this? Okay. Favorite Carter. Now you ask a question after I'm already stuck here. Question for Dave: Did I ever finish that travel trailer you did? videos on a long time ago. No, Trevor, I'll tell you what, I've got a half a dozen projects that I start and then never finish. And I guess that's probably one reason why I don't shoot as many videos as I used to, because I, I I don't like to shoot video and then find out, you know, something shiny comes along and I get busy doing something else. So, um, but yeah. All right, let's let's start off here. We're going to look at. Uh, oh, let's see how we're going to open this. Let's see if this works. Can everybody see? Mark Lindsay says looks good so far. So I guess I'll take that as a yes. Okay, this is Dale's CNC. Uh, and again, I'm going to kind of read off these emails, the, the comments they sent me. It says, uh, this is a picture of his shoestring CNC as of today. This has been a joy to build and modify. And it looks like he's got a, an enclosure built around there. It looks pretty cool. Uh, let's see what the... How am I going to do this? This thing going to let me move to the next picture. We'll see. Ah, yes. Uh, so showing how the material was held down using a down cut spiral quarter inch bit to score the parts before changing bits and cutting them free. And I guess I should have read the first line on top here. He says one of the projects that he has been working on is this clock. Zybach, I think that's how you pronounce it, is a mechanical clock designed by Derek Hugger. Okay, so there's, he's showing how he's uh, holding down the parts. Let's see if I can hit this again. Oh, get out of there. Okay, so there's some of the parts. Uh, picture of parts sanded and some of the assembly. So you can already tell just by looking at that, this is going to be quite a, quite a project it says here's a picture of the drive weight two inch i hope i'm reading the right thing two inch id pvc pipe with walnut veneer and top and bottom of solid walnut the drive weight is filled with fishing weights and shot from shotgun shells finished off with sand to fill to seven pounds plus or minus okay all right, there's another picture that that's one that's another thing that's kind of on one of my bucket lists is to make one of these clocks. Um, they just I don't know they just look cool, especially when they're when they're wound up and moving. Okay, let's see picture 
of the pendulum with the walnut front dome piece with maple backer weighted with lead finishing weights. And I hope I'm clicking these pictures. No, I'm probably not because that's that's the drive weight there, I'm sure. Okay, apparently I, I don't have the pictures in the same order as what I'm showing them here. Okay, there's the pendulum. Put some nice decorative uh, stuff on there. Okay, close up of the finish clock. So we use thicknesses one eighth, one quarter, three eighths, and half inch. Each blank was 15 by 15. The uh, picture of the completed clock measurements are 13.8 inches wide. 15.7 inches tall, 4.7 inches deep. Clock with the pendulum drive weight is 63 inches tall overall. So let me go back to, because I think I did these kind of out of order here. That is just awesome work, Dale. He says, uh, he goes on to say here, the clock runs up to 30 hours but I'm not there yet. Number of pieces, 51 wood parts, 162 total parts to make the clock. You have to make the bushings and axles sanded to fit. I didn't keep track of the hours that it took to build the clock. I'm still tweaking the clock, so I am not finished yet. Yeah, that's uh, that's just amazing work there. I love the detail you, you put on some of those pieces. <laughs> And he goes on to say here, the cutting area for a CNC, which let me go back to that picture as I talk about it. The cutting area for a CNC is 50 inches by 33 inches by 7 inches. The CNC is in my custom cabinet shop of 37 years, 3,600 square feet, and will be moving to the garage at home when the time comes. So really awesome. And you notice he's got, uh, I guess y'all can see my mouse as I move it here. See how he's got the dust collection going over here to, uh, looks like a super dust deputy or whatever you call those things. So pretty nice setup, Dale. Very nice, uh, very nice work. Thanks for, uh, thanks for sending those photos in. Much appreciated. Okay, let's see what we've got here next. Okay, Jesse Snyder. Let me find his email. Okay. Let's see what let's see what kind of pictures he's got here. Okay, I'm gonna try to make sure I'm opening up the right picture with the right thing here. We'll give this a shot. Okay, this, let's see. This is a cell phone holder. It says it's a combination CNC router and laser project. So the uh, looks like the print and everything on there is done with the laser. It's old retro style TV that holds his uh, cell phone so his nephew can watch YouTube videos on the table made with cherry. So that's pretty cool. Let's see. So now let me go down here. Where's that little thing at? Oh, maybe it's going to do it. Oh, I must have opened it up with something different this time. Okay, there's how you slide it in, I guess. Okay, let's see if I can get the right. Uh, okay, this is a recognition award. Was done out of layers of acrylic, mahogany ply, and walnut ply. I used two standoffs to attach top acrylic to the bottom layer of plywood. Okay, maybe that's not the right picture. Let me move on. Okay, here we go. This is this is the one for that. So it's made out of acrylic, mahogany ply, and walnut ply. 
and you use standoffs to attach the top acrylic. So yeah, you can see the, the standoffs right here. So that's very nicely done, Jesse. That, uh, that looks really nice. Okay, now let me see if I can go back here and hit the right kind of, uh, where's the darn button? Where'd it go? Well, nuts. Oh, there it is. Okay, let's see. This is... Okay, this he says, this is my personal project used on the laser exclusively. Made a business card box and business cards for my hobby company. The box is enter... I'm not sure I, what that's supposed to be. Inter, interesting. I, I don't know what that what that word is. Because the oh, interesting. I think it's just misspelled. The box is interesting because the sides are plywood with living hinge, so they can bend to form the corners. That is pretty cool. Okay, let me go find the. Uh, Where's that, Darren? Okay, maybe I got to go back this way. Okay. This is light switch and electrical outlet covers were done on his Masso driven CNC. So we've got somebody with a Masso here. Made with cherry wood, designed with VCAR Pro, combining some models from design and make. The odd looking item in the middle is an antler mount European style. Okay, I think that's supposed to be part of this, yeah. Okay. And he says, these are my submissions, Dave. Uh, year two of this hobby and still having a blast. I heard on your last show that you thought about making CNC lay. That is something I must also have and even bought a second Masso unit with that in mind. I'll wait for you or Peter, uh, talking about Peter Pasuelo, to progress so I'm not attempting that alone. Yeah, it's, uh, it's on my list and I've got the, the lay sitting there uh ready to do it it's just when i get get time to do it i've got a bunch of other irons in the fire right now so but i will get that done eventually okay thank you very much jesse for sending those in next we've got uh jim ridgeway who as i mentioned earlier was the winner a couple of weeks ago on the gatton cnc kit that i gave away uh let's see if i can let's see if i can open these up the right way this time we use this okay yeah it depends on which one i open where the buttons are okay so this is says this is a project i just finished i handmade the gun but the gun rack was made on my cnc I am donating this to the local 4-H group to raffle off. So there's a nice little uh, inlay, it looks like, on the stock of that. And there's the, the gun rack with, uh, looks like, some 3-D carving. And, Jim, I'm assuming, because I think uh, a couple of weeks ago you said that you had a carve right, so I'm assuming that that's what you used to make uh, to make the this 3d carving on this board here yeah that's that's very cool i, I especially like that because i'm a gun guy anyway but yeah that's that's very cool okay jim says yeah so that was that was done this down here was done on the carve right so thank you very much jim for sending those photos in I was really, I didn't know how many photos I would get, really, because I, I didn't even, when did I put that up there yet? Uh, Thursday, I think, or something. Uh, 
but yeah you guys always come through and send me lots of pictures all right thank you jim for those photos next uh we've got jim Senecola. And he sent a couple of pictures here. Let's see here. This is, he says, this is my first double-sided project with 3D bass carved on the rim. So you can see he's got uh, seven bass carved on the outside of the rim here. And then the next photo is showing the other side. And he's got totally wood, let's see, what is it? Totally wood workshop engraved on the bottom of it. So that's very cool. Uh, Jim, you want to share in the chat what, what uh, if you can, what uh, method you used for uh, using the double sided? Did you make some holes where you put, you know, pins to register it or, or how did you do that? Okay. okay, I've given him a minute to answer. I'm going to go ahead and, and move on to the next uh, the next bunch of photos here. Thanks, uh, Jim Senecola. Registered pins. Okay, that's what I thought. Very good. Great job. Thanks for sending those photos in, Jim. And next we've got Mr. Rob Schuster. Let's see if I can get his, uh, he was one I just got oh, just a while back. Here we go. Here's his email. So he says, here are two projects I've done over the last few months. All the design work for both projects was done in VCar Pro. The first is a 3D Eagle on Live Edge Walnut. So let me start with this one here. Okay, that's very nice. Um, the second is a V car picture. Okay, well, wait. Let me let me go through because he's got two or three different. Okay, that looks like he's got this textured over here. It looks like I like that. Yep, that's uh, that's very nice. Now, is this a model? I'm trying to think. I know there's an Eagle, some Eagle models that come with Car Pro, but I don't know if that's one of them or not. You can uh, let us know that in the chat, Rob, if you would. Um, okay, now this, uh, the second is a Car picture that a friend took a concert last month. The original pick is included, so let's see if I can find that. Okay, there's there's the original picture. And then he used V-Carve to make this um, to make this project out of that is that's pretty slick. I like that. Okay, Rob saying he bought that that model for the ego from a different site. Um, yeah, V Carve, V Carve is the stuff. I'm telling you, it's uh, dollar for dollar. It's it's the pretty much the best stuff out there, as far as I can tell. Uh, Rob goes on to say, oh. Yeah, let me read this part. He says, I just want to let you know how much I appreciate the CNC community you have developed. Your Facebook pages have some of the best people on the Internet. And I'm not going to argue with that, Rob, because I, I got a bunch of good folks uh, hanging out in my Facebook group. So his machine, uh, he didn't send a picture of his machine, but his is the Gatton Shoestring. 30 to 40 inch cutting area with a Hitachi two and a quarter horsepower router. And he is one of the Linux CNC users. 
uh, and then uses VCar Pro for design software. So, so if you're into Linux, Rob is a good uh, good one to hit up to get your question answered with that. So thank you very much, Rob, for uh, sending these in. I appreciate all the cool pictures. Let's see. Let me go through them one more time. Make sure I did show them all. Yeah, that's uh, that's just really cool. I like that. I like that a lot. All right. Thank you, Rob. Let's see who's next on the list here. We've got Mr. Ron Cleveland. Uh, let's see what Mr. Cleveland has, what he sent. Okay. Yeah, these I've got numbered so that I get them, get them correct in, in the correct order here. And I haven't asked, but I'm assuming y'all can see these these photos okay. The screen share is still working good. Um, Brad McElroy says, "Does Vectric ever do promos, promos or sales?" I want to get VCar Pro, but $700 is pretty steep for hobby use. And I'll say this again: I've said it a, probably a hundred times. $700 does sound like that's a pretty good chunk of change. But, man, once you get it and start using it, you'll wonder why they didn't charge twi twice as much. It is really great software. And I don't make a dime, you know, saying that. I'm just saying it because I've been using it. Well, when I first got it, they were on version 4.6, and they're up to 9 point something now. So I've been using it for over 10 years, I guess. So, yeah, even for a hobbyist. If you're going to get into, you know, doing any of the kind of work like you're seeing in these photos, you're going to need VCar Pro. It is great stuff. Okay, let's get with uh, Ron Cleveland. This is his first pick. This is, he says, this is a custom pit board I did for a fellow RC, uh, and that's radio controlled for those of you who may not know what RC car means. Uh, racer means uh, it's a 24 inch by 18 inch by three eighths thick acrylic with what I call a smart spot small I'm sorry a small parts trough milled across the bottom uh, that's all your little parts don't roll off and you lose them so uh, he says I've sold several of these all customized to the buyer spec specs and that's pretty cool um you know all the different uh well i guess those are, are logos of some kind that are put on there so that's that's really cool very nicely done ron and then he says photo two now here's uh here's a guy using one of those things this is uh, another pit board in use and they are LED lighted so that is that's cool I can see why you're selling a bunch of those that's 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 pretty neat and RC car racing that's that's a big thing uh, has been for quite a while I I thought about getting into that at one time but I thought I had enough hobbies to take my money so I decided to just keep doing what I was doing. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Photo number three says, I did these Christmas gift tags last Christmas and they were a hit. I used one eighth inch acrylic for them and they're, they're about two and a half by one and a quarter inches. I came up with the idea to make them on Christmas Eve. So these are really cool. Let's see. Yeah, these are all acrylic engraving done with this Gatton CNC. Those are pretty cool. Now let's move on to the next picture. This one says, this is a 24 inch by 18 inch by one quarter inch acrylic window sign for the company I work at. It's lighted on all four sides with RBG LEDs. Hard to see, but I 3D printed the corner pieces 
to hold the aluminum channel frame together. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, that's kind of kind of hard to get a good look at those pieces because it looks like you're taking a picture through a window too there. So, okay. And then finally, we've got one more picture from Ron. And this says the last little acrylic sign I did for a buddy's custom bill billet wheel company, Bond Speed. It also has a 3D printed stand that holds the sign and LED. So there's the 3D printed stand. And you can tell the LEDs are down there, it looks like. So very cool, very nice, something different. You know, it doesn't always have to be uh, wood, woodworking stuff, uh, you know, carving and signs and stuff like that. And it's always nice to see. And even even when I posted the uh, the notice about doing the show and tell show, you know, I said even even 3D printed stuff. It's uh, you know, I'd like to see some of that stuff as well. So, thank you very much, Ron, for sending in those um, those photos. And let's see who we have next on the list here. I think we've got. Mr. Sam Bond. Let's see if I can do these in the right order here. Okay, he says, Dave, this is a camping sign I did for some friends. Uh, actually, I think this might be his personal sign. Yeah, there's where it's hanging at the campsite. And then this is, yeah, I think this is the one he did for uh, some friends. It said, the sign is cut out of a 10, 10 inch by 20 inch cedar board finished with spar varnish. Uh, the camper hang, oh, campers hang these signs in front of their campsite. I do several styles of these signs. Getting ready to launch his website, sbwoodworks.com, selling these signs. Thanks to you for making affordable CNCs. Uh, thank you for the kind words, Sam. And thanks for sending in these uh, photos. I really like that sign. That's uh, that's very nice. The cedar turns out perfect. Okay, let's see what else we've got here. Trevor Carter. See if I can find a, yeah, here's the email Trevor sent. And Trevor, I think he was, uh, you know, there's Ron, he's out there. Uh, <laughs> he says, unfortunately, the RC hobby is taking a backseat to the Gatton CNC. I wouldn't necessarily call that a, a bad thing. Uh, Trevor Carter, yeah, he's in the house. So let's start with his uh photos here and see if I can read the right description with the right photo. Okay. I'm going to take a wild stab and say that this is uh, a sign you made for your son's room using a coloring page and traced bitmap. And that is very cool. Nicely done. Yeah, a lot of, uh, I don't know if, a lot of folks know this, but there's some good good art you can get out of coloring books, kids' coloring books and stuff. So another uh, another source for some good artwork there. All right, let's see what else we got here. Here he says, this is my first 3D carving done on my Gatton CNC. And I love when folks take pictures of their projects and they got them propped up against the machine. That's how I usually do mine. Let's show off the machine too. Nicely done. I like that. Uh, I like that, Trevor. And I like the way this is painted in here too. That's that's pretty cool. And the little accent trim around the thing there. I like that. And then finally, I think we're down to uh, pretty much our last picture. Let's see. 
this is some cribbage boards I cut and will be sent to the guys on the show Gold Rush. I'm not familiar with that show, but I'm sure they're going to love those cribbage boards. That's very cool. Okay. So I think, I think that was the last picture. Oh, no, 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 no. I forgot. We got, we got more. Uh, and last but not least, here's my current project I'm working on, which is going to be a cigar box guitar made of pine and cherry for the neck. Looking forward to tomorrow night's show. Okay. Yeah, this is, uh, I don't know, this is the only, okay, I guess he's got a couple of pictures. So he's made this uh, pine box and going to make a cigar box guitar. So being a big fan of cigar box guitars, Trevor, I can't wait to uh, to see that. So I'm hoping that you're uh, you're going to do a video or something on uh, making that, or at least take lots of photos and post them uh, in the Facebook group. So let's see. Is that yeah? I think okay. So we're we're done with those. So there you have it, folks. Um, for those of you who there we are. For those of you who are wondering, you know, just kind of new to the CNC thing and wondering what kind of stuff you can make with one, there you go. All kinds of uh, cool projects. And this is only just as, I mean, we saw some great stuff tonight, but this is only a small sampling of, of some of the stuff that can be made um, with all kinds of 3D stuff. Not just, not just the routers, but the... Uh, CNC lasers uh, and also uh, the 3D printers. You know, I had uh, I had Ron Cleveland on one of the old CNC with Dave shows. I don't know how long it's been. Probably probably close to a year ago now. And he was showing off his 3D printing. We talked about the different models and stuff. And Ron, I still have that. Uh, what is it? Quiddy technology uh, 3D printer in my uh, my card or my wish list or whatever it is, whatever, however you save it in Amazon, it's still on there. And one of these days, I'm gonna surprise y'all and, and I'll do a show and I'll have a 3D printer setting the uh, setting behind the behind me printing something so. Uh, all right, Mark Lindsay's got something. What is, what is he saying about me? He says, Dave, what Trevor didn't say is that he decided to build a CBG Thursday. He did that box in one day. I'll definitely have lots of picks and maybe do a video or two if it turns out like I hope. Oh, we want to see it no matter how it turns out. Because, you know, the cool thing, um, I just finished up a, a cigar box guitar myself. Um uh, actually, I've done well. One, I don't. I didn't really call it a cigar box guitar because I had some um, right up here in my lumber rack. I had a bunch of uh, pallet wood of all things left over from one of those pallet challenges, and so I made a box out of pallet wood, and then I put a Telecaster neck on it. So I finished that one up a few weeks or two or three weeks ago, I guess. Uh, it's a six string. And then I did a, just finished up yesterday, as a matter of fact, finished stringing it up, a um, three-string uh, cigar box guitar. And uh, I've made a few of them before, but I hadn't made one in about five or six years. And uh, my buddy, Bill Lutz, if he's still over there in the chat, I don't know if you're still over there, Bill, but he's, he's got into making them and he keeps posting these pictures on Facebook and doing these videos. So he's kind of got me inspired to, uh, to get back to making them. And the other thing is there's, um, a, uh, Georgia, they call it the Georgia cigar box guitar festival. They had their first one ever last September. And they had it right here in McDonough. So it was like right down the road from me. So I went to that, had a great time, met Travis Bolin. Um, 
So yeah, I've got, uh, I had to move all the stuff off because I had my CNC. I was using it kind of like a work table uh, as I often do. And I've got like five necks over there started. I got a bunch of boxes up under here. Um, I've been buying stuff from CB Giddy. Uh, big plug for them, I guess. Uh, been buying stuff from them pretty much in bulk. Getting ready to try to build. Uh, yeah, Travis Rocks. Yeah, he does. He's awesome. I got his... Uh, the CD I picked up from him at the that festival, and I got it, you know, keep it on this computer, and that's what I listen to all the time while I'm out here uh, working on them. But, uh, but yeah, it's uh, they're a lot of fun to make, Trevor. You, you'll you'll have a blast. I don't I don't see Bill Lutz. He might he might already left, but uh, but yeah, Bill Lutz has got some good videos. Of course, he I, I tease him all the time because he's left handed, and I always say, yeah, you always build them wrong handed. You know, but uh, they're a lot of fun. I, I'm, I'm going to start trying to make, you know, make as many as I can or as many as I have time to make. But uh, Ron Cleveland says there are now cheaper alternatives that work great, less than $200. I I really haven't looked around much, Ron. I, I, that one that I've got in my wish list or shopping cart, whatever it's called, is like six forty nine, I think. I think it's come down a little. I think it was about seven hundred bucks when I put it in there, and the price kind of, uh, you know, fluctuates a little bit. But I think it's like, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm laughing at Trevor's comment. He said I had to build my own cigar box. Due to the fact that most of what people smoke around here comes in baggies. <laughs> that's, that's funny right there. Yeah. Well, I'm fortunate because I've got, uh, I've got a, uh, I don't know what you call it, tobacco shop, I guess, uh, right down the road from me in the public shopping center. So I can go down there and get some boxes. I haven't gone down to get any. I've, I've actually got, uh, probably about a dozen or so boxes that I had from before when I, cause I thought when I first started building them, I thought, ah, I'm going to build a bunch of these. And I went and there was like three different tobacco stores and I ran around and got, got a bunch of boxes. And then I got, you know, again, something else shiny come along and I, I quit making them. But, um, and also, uh, Trevor, I don't know if you've ever checked out the, the CB Giddy website, um, whether well, there's Cigar Box Nation, which is kind of like a forum type thing, and then there's uh, the CB Giddy website. They actually sell laser cut uh, finger joint boxes that you can put together. And they've got a license plate size that's perfect for doing a, a license plate. And they've got uh, the other side. In fact, I just bought three of each of them. I got three of the license plate size. And then there's three that are, I think, eight and a half by 11 or something like that. So they're perfect for putting your own graphics on. Um, Frankie says, send me a box, Dave. You need to see Mark Lindsay. He's got, he's got, he doesn't even know how many he has because he said he quit counting them. So, yeah, you need to see if you can get him to send you a box. I just bought a couple of uh, a couple of boxes from Travis Bowl, and he had posted on Facebook that he had some antique boxes, uh, and they're beautiful, and, and nothing like what, what I've seen around here. So I, I immediately jumped on those and got got those from him. But anyway, getting back to the Ron's thing, yeah, I haven't uh, pulled the trigger on that 3D printer. But I will probably, when I do finally get ready to to pull the trigger, I will get in touch with you, Ron, and, and you know, get your thoughts on what's out there. Because I, I see more and more, especially in the Southern Woodworkers Facebook group, um, a lot of those guys have, have them and are printing out stuff. And uh, I really don't know what I would use it for yet. That's one reason why I haven't pulled the trigger. Uh I just, you know, I like making stuff out of wood and I like making stuff out of metal. I just haven't thought of anything that, you know, 
I feel like I really need to, to get a 3D printer for, but I, I kind of want one just to play around with. But uh, Trevor says, I've got stuff added to a cart and ready to buy. And I don't, I don't know where you're talking about, but if you're talking about CB Giddy, you, they're, they're like a lot of places you get, I forget, over a certain dollar amount and it's free shipping. So, yeah, see, Mark said he stopped counting at 135. He's still got, still getting them, but he, but he but stopped counting them. So, yeah, if you want to, you know, box, you need to check with Mark Lindsay. He, he could probably give you 10 of them and never miss them. I, yeah, somebody said something about an amp. Yeah, I, got, I bought one of the little amp things from CB Giddy too, so I can use when I get one, I string it up. Uh, it's just a little battery operated thing, but you can, you know, plug it in and make sure the pickups all work and tune it up and stuff like that. And I wanted that for out here. So I didn't have to bring my other, not that my other amp is real expensive, but it's a lot heavier and I didn't want to bring it out here where it's all dusty all the time. Okay. We're, uh, yeah, we're winding up at the top of the hour. Anybody got any other questions about, anything i mean we kind of got off on a on a cigar box guitar uh thing there if anybody if anybody's a cigar smoker and they've got boxes and they 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 don't want to build things send me an email or something because if you got nice ones it's one of the things i found when you go to at least here i don't know mark if you've had this problem I, you know if you got people saving them for you they're probably not beat up but I don't have it out here. I should have brought it out here. But the one I just finished, I built it for myself because I used the crappiest box that I had out of the bunch. It's a it's a Java box. So it's a nice box, but the back of it's all scratched and stuff like that. So I, I found that it's hard to go to the tobacco stores and get them because I guess when they're empty, they're, they're nothing to those guys. They just throw them around and then they get, get kind of beat up. So... Um, but uh anywho i don't see any other questions uh over there andrew Hague's talking about on filament friday youtube channel his top printer is a cr10 mini 300 by 250 for 300 dollars a few guys that work at I have heard people talking in the the Facebook group about a CR10. I don't I don't know what that is. I don't know how that would compare to the the one. Let's see. Ron says I have a CR10 and an in Ender two. They're both great, but you can't beat under two hundred bucks. I'm not opposed to. You know, I'm not opposed to spending five or six hundred dollars. I just want to make sure I get a, a good one. Uh, and I heard, I think it was Michelle Sleeper one time when she was on a show. I believe it was Russ Clarity's show, and she was talking about how it's better to have the one, or maybe it was you, Ron, that said this. I can't remember. I think it was Michelle Sleeper that said it that it's better to have one that's got the enclosure because even if it's in the house and the air conditioner comes on or something that can affect the the way it prints i don't know so trevor carter says do you do your own tool path for frets uh trevor i've got uh, and you may want to use this method uh let me see if i can find it here All right, now, we're, uh, this is a fixture, a very simple fixture that I made way back when I first started doing cigar box guitars. And you can see it said over here, it says nut, and over, over here is the bridge. And all this is, is I, you know, make sure this is nice and square to my gantry on my CNC. And then this, this is a dud uh, fretboard. But what I do is I stick this, 
stick this in a fixture and I push it all the way over here to this side. And then I use in this particular fretboard, I just used a round over for where the nut goes, you know, the center line of the of the nut, because I used a like threaded rod for you could use a screw or threaded rod. Now, if you're going to use a real nut, you've got to cut a square slot. But I just used a um, core box bit, I guess is what it was to make that. And then you can see, I think you can see. Yeah, you can see a little bit. What I use is a real small 60 degree V bit. And I go down about 15 thou. And I'm putting a mark. So I'm using the accuracy of the CNC to lay out my where my frets go. But then that little groove that puts in there is just perfect for putting the fret saw in there to finish them off. And also, I don't know if you can tell it. Eh, you probably can't even tell it. I'll try to hold it up there. But this, let's see if I do it like this. This has been radiused a little bit too. A lot of guys, when they make them, they just, because it's only an inch and a half wide, they just leave them flat. Well, I used my CNC, which again, the CNC is a great tool for, make, for making other tools. So I used my CNC to make, uh, I just cut out a bunch of, three-quarter inch plywood pieces that had a, I think it's a 12 inch radius. And then I glued them together about five pieces. And then you can get the sandpaper that has the adhesive back on it, stick that to there. And then you can run it up and down this and put just a slight radius on there. And from what I understand, people that really play guitars, I'm not, I'm not a player. I just pick around at it. But from what I can understand, it makes a big difference to people that really are, that really play. They prefer the the radius fretboard. And I also did the same thing where I made some blocks. I mean, you can buy this stuff, but when you got a CNC, why buy it? You can make it cheaper. So you, uh, I made some some of the same kind of things, some plywood pieces, glued them together, and then I've got a big radius. And I got two of them. I got one that's got 80 grit, and I got another one that's got 220 on it. And you can use them to smooth out the neck to put a nice smooth radius on the back of the neck. So that's uh, it's like I said, it's fun to uh, to have a CNC to make lots of. Stuff, but I've got all kinds of little fixtures and things that I use. But I mean, you don't have to do do it like this. Um, you can, you know, you, there's, there's, you know, different kinds of fret uh, tools, uh, fretting tools you can buy. I like to do it on a table saw. You can buy a little thin blade and some people do it that way. In fact, I know a luthier uh, that he had me make some, uh, well, I didn't make them, but I drew them up and then had my guys at a sheet metal shop make them. But it's where it's got a little pin and you run it and cut it and then move it over and cut it and it has the right spacing and all that. But um, but I just thought it was cool because, you, you know, like I said, doing it this way, you've got the accuracy of the CNC laying out the proper distance. I mean, you can get it dead nuts doing it that way. So, and that's a whole lot easier for me than trying to use my old eye and a you know, in a tape measure and trying to, I'd never get it right doing that. So, uh, do I use that scarf joint sanding jig? I have Mark. Uh, I made mine. Well, since you brought that up, let me see if I can find it. I think it's right over here. Yeah, we're, this is turning into a cigar box. <laughs> so this is the scarf joint sanding jig that I made. And this is based off of, uh, I think his name's David Fletcher. Uh, I think his YouTube channel is, 
Well, I'm not sure. It may be David Fletcher. It may be Fletcher Guitars. Mark, I know you know who I'm talking about. Guy down in Australia. But anyway, to do a scarf joint, and you notice I've got just this sticking out, so I have a place to, to clamp this to hold it steady. And then you put your put your neck in here, and this is all cut at the ex exact angle, and then this is nothing more. This just slides on here, and it's got sandpaper. So when you put that on there, and you go like this, and you get that perfect angle on that piece, and then you turn around and put, yeah, David Fletcher Custom Guitars. I, th I thought that's what it was. Uh, then you put the other piece on and sand it, and then that way when you put your, your scarf joints together, it's perfect. You can get it, and you can't even hardly tell whether where it was glued together. So that's another another one of the tools I use my CNC to make. Fletcher handcrafted guitars. Okay, yeah, I couldn't remember. I know, I know his name's David Fletcher, uh, and you could probably find him if you search YouTube um, for that. Oh, thank you, Ke uh, Keith. He says, "Happy belated birthday, Dave." Yeah, my birthday was Tuesday. Yeah, another trip around the sun. But uh, thanks, uh, thank you for that. Um, I tell you, I got, uh, I had a great birthday because I did something I, I haven't done in years, and that's turn this stupid thing off, and I put it in the drawer. I, I turned it off Monday night, put it in the drawer, and I didn't turn it back on until Wednesday. And you guys would have died laughing because I got so many happy birthday day comments and messages and di emails and different things. That this thing, when I turned it on and it powered up, it dinged and beeped and buzzed and vibrated for about 30 minutes. Because I ain't kidding you, there was just a ridiculous amount of folks that were wishing me happy birthday. And, you know, when I turned it on, all of them come flooding in. So thank you all for the birthday wishes. Uh, these days, I'm just happy to wake up any morning. So yeah yeah i thought it was funny because i i saw the comments about people getting their their phones were blowing up and i had mine turned off the whole day but i would i i'm not kidding uh, uh if you get a chance to do that you know we're all a bunch of social media knuckleheads now so it's really nice to turn that thing off and not think about nothing uh i did it for about 36 hours so that was my my birthday gift to myself. No social media, no nothing. So I didn't have to check email just because that's how my orders come in. I didn't want to miss one of those. But, um, yeah, it was nice to turn that off. More people should do that and turn the damn thing off and enjoy life. There's more to life than cell phones and social media and all that stuff. So, all right. Well, I've rambled on now. We managed to go over a little bit. Uh, we've still got 75 folks watching. I appreciate, uh, y'all hanging around. Uh, any other questions before I sign off here? What do you know over there? Mark's talking about, uh, Trevor Carter says, I couldn't turn my phone off for 36 hours because I'd miss all the coolness you guys all build. Yeah, you just blow up your phone the next day time you turn it on. That's the only difference. <laughs> I didn't even think, for some reason, I didn't even think about that is when I turned my phone off, I didn't think about how I would still get all that stuff. It just come all at once. Like I said, it, it, it beat bopped and buzzed for about 30 minutes that next day. Masso says, hey, Dave, what microphone do you use? It works very well. It's um, it's called a, let me get it over here where you can see it. Mine is all dusty. I'm surprised the thing still works because I leave it out here all the time. It's called a Blue Yeti, and I don't know why they call it a Blue Yeti because I think they come in gray and black. Uh 
but these are really nice. There's you can set them, uh, Jad. Like for me, like I'm the only one here now, so I have it set. I think it's called car cardioid. I think is the setting where it's only trying to pick up what it's pointed at. So in other words, if I had, uh, you know, if I have a fan or something on behind me, as long as it's behind the microphone and I have it on that setting, you won't ever hear it. Uh, but it also has other settings where if you're like, say you're at a, at a desk and you're interviewing somebody that's sitting across from you, you can set it up for that and it will work. You know, it'll pick up both ways or it'll do the surround thing. It's got several different settings, but I pretty much keep mine on the, the cardi cardioid. I think I hope, I hope I'm using that right, word, right? Uh, it, whatever setting it is where it's straight on. So those are, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go on Amazon and get you one, Jack. They're uh, they're not real expensive. I don't even know what they are these days. Seems like that one was around. I don't know, 75, 80 bucks maybe. They're probably cheaper now because I've had mine mm, two or three years, I guess. Uh, but yeah, the blue the blue Yeti is very popular. I've seen lots of guys guys using it any other questions Trevor says you use a computer camera or external camera for these videos uh, for for these live shows I have a uh, a Logitech Basically, it's a webcam, but it's, you know, kind you set on top of a computer monitor or something and just plug in with USB. The If I switch it, like right now, I'll show you. I'll switch it to the, uh, to the webcam that's built into this. And you can see how grainy and crappy the, the quality of the webcam is in the... Uh, laptop so it's it's just a separate little webcam that i have it's a logitech this this one is a c270 i actually have another one that's uh uh it's a well i can't remember the, the exact number it's a logitech 920 or something like that it's it's actually supposed to be better than this one um uh, but this is just like a, a little webcam. Now for shooting the, the videos, you know, if and when I do a regular YouTube video, not these live shows, I use a Canon T5i uh, for those. I've had that for, I don't know, a couple of years now, I guess. For the longest time when I was, you know, for about the first three years of making YouTube videos, I used a... It's called a, a flip video. It looks kind of like a cell phone, a little gray thing. Has one red button. You put it on the tripod, hit the red button, walk around, talk, come back, hit the button. That's the only buttons it had. It was re real easy to use. But, you know, you couldn't do anything really fancy with it. But uh, I use that for about three years. You look at some of my older videos, you can tell when I switched from that to the uh, Canon T5i. Any other questions? Looks like we're talking about cameras and how do I do the split for the guest on a live show? Well, if you're talking about a Google uh, Hangout, which is how I do my show, there's a lot of other um, third-party software, I guess, you can use. But I always just do the Google Hangout. Now, right now, it's just me, so there's only one. That's it. You just see me. But if I have, uh, say I have, like, when I have Peter Pasuelo on there, uh, and, I, and I have Hobby on here to help me with the chat or whatever, 
they join the Google Hangout, and then you can just set it up so that whenever they start talking, whoever's talking, that's what the camera will jump to. So, the uh, Jim says you're breaking up. Is my voice cracking up? <laughs> Maybe my dog's chewing the damn. Uh, Sounds like I'm drowning. Okay, well, I guess it's a good time. I haven't even taken a drink of water yet. Okay, well, sometimes that happens after you've been all the while. The bandwidth catches up to you. So I guess that's a good time to sign out. Let me make sure. Let me switch. Uh, Can you hear me now? This that will be like that old Verizon commercial. Um, I just switched the mic to the, the webcam mic. Now I'll switch it back. May not may not make any difference. Maybe just the uh, bandwidth catching up with me out here. Okay, all good now. Okay, I mean, are you still good? Because I switched back. I just switched it off and switched back. Uh, but uh, yeah, my dog chewed the, uh, well, not Rocky, but uh, Jack. He chewed the Cat 6 cable in two because I had it just laying on the ground out there. And I had to replace that. And this time I've got it kind of running up in the air. So unless he learns to jump that high, I should be good where he won't, won't chew that up. Anyway, man, we still got 76, 77 folks watching. Uh, I appreciate I see somebody's been hitting the thumbs up there. We got 41 thumbs up. I appreciate that, guys. Um, what do y'all think before we get out of here? What do y'all think of the uh, uh, the show and tell shows? They've always seemed to be, be pretty popular. Uh I like doing them just because that's, you know, I get to see a lot of cool stuff. So we'll do uh, do another show here in the next few weeks. Oh, and you know what? Nobody's even mentioned the giveaway. Y'all being nice over there, not asking about a giveaway. Um, and I'm all set to do one. Who's ready for a giveaway? Lyle says he likes the show and tell. Okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get set up to do a giveaway. We've got 70, 80 people watching now. Uh, let me uh, let me see and move this. Now, y'all remember, once I pull this laptop over here, I can no longer see the chat. Forgot to register. You might be in here, Mark. I can't remember. Let's uh, let me go check the list. We had Let's see how many we got here. All right, come on, let's go. Yeah, you almost let me get out of here without doing the giveaway. Well, I say I'm going to do it if I can get this stupid thing to open up. There we go. Maybe. Oh. I guess I already had it open. That's why it wasn't good. Okay, so I've got 43... 43, we keep getting fewer and fewer entries because I'm purposely not really talking about it a lot on Facebook or something like that. I figure I'm going to kind of leave it to the loyal people that, that tune in and watch the show. Uh, you know, you got to be li uh, watching live to to win anyway. So I'm trying to uh, reward the folks that, that tune in on Saturday night and, and watch, watch it live here. So, so we've got 43. So let me minimize that. And now let me go back to 
here. And I'll go find that uh, random.org is right here. And we've got 1 to 43. We go okay so ryan ballard in the house uh dave stewart kenneth i'm not sure how you say that last name joaquin is that right um uh, jeff wilder Jerry Bonfield never entered this week. Yeah, you gotta enter every week because once we once I do a drawing, like once I do this drawing tonight, all the people that entered for this week, I erase that and we start over. So it's only the people that really take the time to go enter and come and watch the show on Saturday. That's that's the kind of folks I want to reward, the ones that that are loyal enough to come watch and and do it. You know, the ones that if I just say, well, you enter the first time and you're good for all of them, then, you know, then they wouldn't, the, you do the drawing and they wouldn't be watching anyway. Cause so, all right, let's do this one through 43. And we're going to generate a number. The number is 41. Let me go see who 41 was. Well, come on, move up there. 41 is Leo Steger. Leo Steger, if you're, I hope I'm saying your name right. If you're in the chat, you have 90 seconds from as soon as I can get this phone going here. Okay, 90 seconds from now. Leo, are you in the house? Yeah, I think I think he was here earlier, but I don't know if he's still here or not. Leo Steger. Comment in the chat. Let us know you're here watching live. Thomas Grimm says, remind us how to enter. You go to the DaveGatton.com website and follow the links. It's real easy. It says that the top says Gatton CNC kit giveaway. Just fill out the form, send it in. But you have to fill one out every week. Because once we do a drawing, it's uh, it's gone. Those are all those all get wiped out and we start over. It's like kind of like a lottery ticket. You got to buy one every week. More people here since I said giveaway. <laughs> yeah, one of these days, one of these days I'm gonna screw everybody up and I'm gonna do the giveaway at the beginning of the show. Go to the DaveGatton.com website, James. All the information there is 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 there. Okay, Leo. I hate it, but you missed out. You're out of time. All right, so let's go back to the random.org and we'll pick another one. Leo's loss is somebody else's gain here. The new number is 35. Let's go see who number 35 is. Thirty-five, Mr. Dave Mack. Dave Mack. Got 90 seconds from right now, and I know he was in there earlier. I don't know if he's still out there. Dave Mack, if you're out there, leave a comment in the chat. Let us know you're watching live. All 
I hate it. He may have. Uh, I know he's. He keeps talking about his crappy uh, internet. I think he's got huge net or something. He lives out kind of out in the sticks. I think. So he may not be here with us no longer. But I mean, I try to make it as fair as I can, folks. You know, draw. You know, if the if your number comes up, you got to be watching live, and you got ninety seconds like everybody else. So. As soon as the phone goes off, that's it. We'll go to another one. And there's nothing more frustrating than trying to watch a live show if you've got crappy internet. So I don't think uh, I don't think he's going to make it. We're going to end up like 15 seconds. Dan. Okay, that's it. Sorry, Dave Mac. He's here. What do you say, folks? He he missed it by about a half a second. Should we let him? Should we let him in? I say that's close enough, Dave. I'm going to say that's close enough. Congratulations, Dave Mac. I'll get your, uh, actually, I've got to cut one because I, I sold them all this week. <laughs> I try to have an extra one. Um, I, I try to keep an extra one handy for these giveaways, and I didn't make it this week because everybody bought them up before I could uh, make one. But I'll, I'll run one tomorrow. It's supposed to rain all day tomorrow anyway, I think. So, uh Yeah, congratulations, Dave. I'm glad you made. Boy, you, get, you just barely got it under the wire too, because I was about to to uh, do a second drawing. Um, and I hate it for old Leo because he's normally watching. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Why? Why he's not here? But like I said, I try to make it as fair as I can. You got to be here to to win, and this is the only way I can. The only way I can do it. So, all right. So thanks again to everybody. Let's see, what do we got watching now? 82 viewers, looks like. Let's see, I can get out of this. Mark Lindsay says, welcome to the Brotherhood of Gatton CNC owners. We'll do the blood initiation later. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you all so much for tuning in. Thanks especially to you guys that have sent the, the photos in. We'll probably, maybe I'll start doing, you know, we do the, the Q&A things. Uh, maybe we'll start doing uh, the show and tell type thing once a month too. So, uh, so thanks for sending those photos in. Always enjoy seeing the cool projects and stuff you're doing. Um, and thanks again, especially to Dave, Matt, congratulations. I'll get your, uh, Gat CNC kit sent out first of the week. Sometimes as I can get it cut. Uh, and I guess that's it. We'll wrap this one up. Call it a wrap. Um, anybody got any, anything they want to add real quick before I sign off? Jim Senecola. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, Dave, uh, his, his internet must be really crappy. You're the winner. Send you one first of the week. You'll get a, uh, I'll, I, you know, in that form that you fill out, I ask for your email address. So that's so I can send you a tracking number when I send it. And from where you live, whatever day I send it, you'll have it the next day. I'm sure. Um, uh, Okay. Yeah, Trevor, uh, good luck on the Cigar Box guitar build. We'll have to do, you know, I've actually thought about doing a Cigar Box guitar challenge. May have to think about that. See if all us CNC guys can uh, show our stuff by making a Cigar Box guitar or, or a Cigar Box 
type guitar, you know, even if you make your own box or whatever. So. All right. Well, I don't see any more questions. Uh, thank you, Ryan. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Um, yeah, we're way over now. Uh, thanks again for watching. And we will see y'all next week. Everybody have a great weekend. Be safe out there. Good night.